Hello everyone and welcome to a world's preview here at LOL Class. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the current state of the game and the champion picks to look out for heading into worlds. Riot has recently introduced huge balance changes to League of Legends and the effects of these are evident, especially when it comes to how the game is played competitively. High tier top lane champions have shifted from a more traditional, reliable full tank style to the more carry oriented late game champions. During Asia's Season 5 World Qualifications, we have seen more and more unusual champions like Fiora, Gangplank, Olaf, Skarner and even Darius on the competitive stage, all of them with great impact. The most recent patches have affected the top lane position the most, primarily due to the addition of fighter AD damage items. The former kings of the top lane, Maokai, Nar, Hecarim and Rumble have seen minor nerfs over the course of the last few patches and are being replaced by carry oriented type champions like Fiora, Darius and Olaf. Going into Worlds, Season 5 definitely belongs to the top lane. The only region that has any competitive experience on the new set of juggernauts is China. The last few rounds of regular season play in the LPL was hosted on patch 5.16 and gave us the first glimpse on how these power picks can change the pace of the game. This small head start may give China the edge they're looking for in their hunt to topple the Korean powerhouses. Fiora Initially, most players were not happy about Fiora's rework, mainly because it removed everybody's favorite solo queue stomper, the one who could deal an incredible amount of unavoidable damage. However, most competitive players did not share the same sentiment. LGD's Acorn showed the world how good the new Fiora is in the LPL finals. After Acorn's strong performance, Fiora was either banned or first picked in 9 out of the 10 games. Here are some of the qualities that make the all new Fiora such a strong champion in the competitive environment. First, Fiora's passive makes for an incredibly strong laning phase, making very few champions capable of winning a 1 vs 1 against her. Second, not a single champion can deal with Fiora's ability to chase people down. The cooldown of her Q is reduced massively if she hits a target, allowing her to continuously dash. Combined with the powerful slow on her E, Fiora is very difficult to run away from. The ability that sets apart an average Fiora from a great one has to be reposed. With the ability to briefly negate any damage and CC, a well-timed repose can result in incredible outplays and makes it very difficult for opponents to instantly kill her during fights. While Fiora's rework has been a massive buff overall, she still has one very key weakness that takes her down a notch in the competitive scene, her inability to hold her own in a 1 vs 2 lane swap. Without the ability to dominate a lane and snowball, Fiora becomes far less useful. She's a champion that desperately relies on items, as without them, she will either not have enough damage or die too quickly to be relevant. Gangplank In recent competitive matches around the globe, we have seen a significant use of Gangplank. In EU, players like Soas have shown the power of Gangplank as a top laner on the LCS stage. However, in Asia, players prefer to bring Gangplank into the mid lane, something perfectly demonstrated by EDG Spawn in Game 4 against IG, in which he was able to set the enemy team ablaze with well-placed and timed barrels. Here are some of the different qualities of the new Gangplank which make him the titan he currently is. First things first, Gangplank's E, Powder Keg, is the cornerstone of his kit. It provides 40% armor penetration, which is an invaluable weapon to have against tanks. Pawn, Zetai and Acorn have all shown us the incredible value of a well-timed Powder Keg combo, often completely turning a losing fight around. One good combo is sometimes all it takes to dominate a game. Second, Gangplank's Q, Parlay, is often overshadowed by the raw strength of his kegs. But the truth is, Gangplank's Q is very strong in its own right. During the late game, he can easily land crits for over a thousand damage. The raw synergy between Gangplank's E and Q grants him extremely high late game damage. In competitive play, he tends to get a lot of resources thrown at him. And once he builds his essential items, he becomes a time bomb with his game changing explosive damage. As an OP late game champion, Gangplank has a hard time during the early laning phase. Olaf, Darius and Riven are all strong counter picks who can make his laning phase very difficult. As a result, Gangplank is sometimes picked for mid to avoid these scenarios. Jungle while not as many as the top lane, the jungle did receive some changes in patch 5.18. The most noticeable ones are the addition of Skarner and the continued success of Elise. These two champions were both popular picks in the regional qualifier matches in LPL and LCK. Compared to Elise, Skarner was picked less but showed unexpected power inside the game. EDG's Clearlove was the first player to bring the new Skarner to a competitive match during their third game against IG during the Chinese regional qualifiers. 
Despite IG's response to Skarner with picking up two Zonias and three Quicksilver Sashes, Skarner's teamfight initiating power is simply unstoppable and eventually helped EDG take the match point. To be considered a top tier jungle pick in patch 5.18, a champion must have good teamfight initiation, dragon control, and tankiness. The new Skarner just so happens to fulfill all of these requirements rather well. Skarner's flash ult combo is simple and powerful for initiating teamfights. With the help of Crystal Spires, Skarner has a natural advantage against other junglers during dragon control skirmishes. On top of that, Skarner is a naturally tanky champion, regardless of the item build you choose. AD Carry The buff to top lane fighters and bruisers like Olaf and Fiora has further limited AD Carry's power in the game. In the current meta, top priority AD Carries are either late game carry champions such as Tristana and Kog'Maw or utility ones such as Ash and Severe. Since Severe has been repeatedly nerfed, Ash has become a top picker ban choice this patch thanks to her ability to kite low mobility top laners and initiate teamfights. Ash With the repeated nerfs to other AD carry champions, Ash is getting more and more attention. As an AD carry with hard initiation, the scouting power provided by her hawkshot, and great late game damage, Ash has become a top pick in the current patch. However, her biggest weakness is very obvious. Her poor mobility makes her vulnerable to hard initiations from the enemy team. This was demonstrated in the KT vs SKT match during the LCK Summer Playoff Finals where KT's Ash ended the game with a score of 0 kills and 9 deaths. Support Patch 5.18 has not changed the support role a whole lot outside of the incredibly useful Zeke's Harbinger. This item provides useful stats for support players while simultaneously giving the AD carry an opportunity to reach 100% crit chance in the mid game. Champions like Alistar and Braum have remained popular picks across all the regions. Besides those two, the go-to classic support Thresh remains a staple in everyone's champion pool. LGD's PYL and EDG's Mako are well-known Thresh players. Worlds this year could be the perfect stage for some game-changing hooks. Thanks for watching this Worlds preview here at LoL Class. Let us know in the comment section what team you think has the strongest shot at taking it all.